If a painful memory or hurt from the past is trying to hold you back, it's time for you to find healing. Today on Better Together, Sheila Walsh, Diana Nepstad, Nona Jones, and Jackie Velasquez are here joining me to talk about how to find freedom. Come on, we need to talk about it. I think one of the moments that surprised me the most um, when it comes to inner healing or um, looking back over my life, in reflection, I can recall, um, I think it was after I got married, and it was after having four children, and it was the moment of recovery after the twins, because I, I had four girls under the age of two, and it was the last pregnancy, wow. third pregnancy, and the bonding with my kids got a little more challenging. Mm. Um, and when it came to intimacy with my husband, I started to become a little more erratic, like my body would shut down um, in the most intimate moments. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you feel like you're having an out-of-body experience viewing yourself from the outside, almost like a third party. Mm -hmm. And you, you see your body begin to just close up, begin to distance itself. And I was not aware that my body was automatically just protecting itself constantly without my permission. And that was the moment in self-reflection that I can see that something was manifesting in my life that I had no control over. My body was responding without my permission, without my engagement, and I became so self-aware that um, it would take you know, some time to try to bring myself back. Weeks and spells of two weeks that I'm good, two weeks that I'm, I'm really poor in my physical health, in my mental health, the, the self-narrative that I would speak to myself. It was like almost like the climax of, of the point of where I realized there's something wrong with me and I need to fix it really fast or else I'm, my marriage won't last. Wow. So... I, I can remember just digging out of the pit of wholeness, healing. What does that look like? I couldn't afford counseling, couldn't afford medication, especially being young in marriage. You're building your life. You're working. Those are the shades of what it looks like to feel very disabled on the inside. So what is healing to me? Healing means like James chapter one, it says that Consider it all joy when you go through various trials and tribulation, because if you allow perseverance and perseverance has, has its perfect work, you will be complete and lacking nothing. I felt, I felt very incomplete. Mm. I felt very ill-equipped. Mm. I felt very half full instead of the fullness of God. Right. And so um, that's, that's the beginning of the journey of of my healing, of what healing looks like. It's the completeness. Trace, were you able to trace where that began, what the root of that was? And it was, it was abuse, you know, abuse. I was abused by the age of three all the way to the age of 12. And this was by my stepdad mm. and, his, um, and his son, which is my stepbrother, and also a family friend, which was like almost like a godparent, so to speak. Mm. So three individuals that targeted my life. And, and I think the manifestation of all of that, just the coping mechanisms that I worked through all my life, that it helped me during the time where I was being abused, where it would, you know, I would, my body would protect itself, would just shut down, wall up, you know, lock it up, you know, yep. whatever yep. to survive. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, looking back at it now, you you begin to see, okay, I needed help, I needed wholeness, yeah. I need healing. And that I did receive as soon as I started to engage in that and press through that. How many women have that story oh, you know, yeah. in the world yeah. today? There's, yeah. there's um, people are broken, mm -hmm. people are emotionally wrecked inside. Yeah. And so this week we're gonna talk about how God wants to heal those broken places. Yeah down deep in our soul. So what'd you do? I remember the first instinct that I received from the Holy Spirit was, 
you know, just go outdoors, Diana. Just go outdoors. Don't stay indoors. Go outdoors. So I started going outdoors with all of my four kids in a triple stroller, one on a leash. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. So I'm pushing the stroller, trying to be outside, getting vitamin D, because I was susceptible for, like, low moments in my life. Yeah. So I needed that. Um, I needed a friend. I remember in college, one of the choir members just happened to work in the counseling center on campus. And she said, oh, you know, whenever, whenever you want to chat, just come over and chat. And I distinctly remember sharing the story with her of my life. And it was almost like sequence order. Mm -hmm. And for many abuse survivors, they need to share their yes. story. Yes. It's like chronologically, yes you know, a time pattern in sequence, and the more you tell it, the more it sets you free. Yes. And so it, that was the beginning of just the journey. I was interested when Diana said that the more you tell your story, the more it sets you free. And I think there's so much truth in that because sometimes we hold our story in, you know, and it's attached to shame and we think we're the only one. I remember the first time I spoke out loud about the fact that I, I'm um, diagnosed with clinical depression. And I mean, I remember thinking I was waiting for like a lightning bolt or for the audience to clear out. What was so interesting to me was at the end of that particular conference, I stood in line for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, listening to women tell me their stories, saying things like, I've never heard anyone tell my story out loud. That I think that's when, you, when you're healed enough to be able to tell your story, it's where you begin to see the redemption of Christ, that like at the end of the story of Joseph, what, the, what you intended for evil, God intended for good. That I, I recommend that when, when wounds are fresh, then, then we don't just share our story. We need time to, to find a level of healing. But then when we are in a place where we're able to share our story, not only does it set us free, but we have the joy of seeing God use it to set other people free too. There's power in words. Yeah. There's power in um, it, 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 Proverbs, I think, is it says, you know, a joyful spirit, a, yeah. a right mind, mm -hmm. um, that when you have a healthy mind and a healthy attitude, oh, there's healing. Oh, but woe to the person who has a broken spirit because it's yes. like disease yeah. in the bones. You know what? It's, it's, it's funny because um, you mentioned taking medication. Yeah. And I've long believed that you can't heal spiritual brokenness with oh, physical tools. Oh, talk about it now. Right? I yes. mean, like, our, our spirit is so different than our body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we try to medicate the body, and it doesn't penetrate the spirit. Yeah. I mean, and I, I get that, where mm -hmm. you have people who are dealing with trauma, and you're dealing with pain, and you're like, well, if I could just sleep longer, if I can mm -hmm. just take this pill, if I can just take this vacation, and you end up doing all those things, and it doesn't heal. Yeah. And it's really discovering what yeah. you said, which is that spiritual healing power yeah. Yeah. that comes in Christ and it comes in the Word of God. And I think shining the light. Absolutely. There. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus does yeah. for us. I remember as a kid, we had to go pull the weeds outside. My, my, my daddy would send us out to go pull, and we had tumbleweeds in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And I remember Daddy would have to say, you gotta get it down by the root, and you gotta yeah. pull the root out, yeah. Yeah. or it's just gonna keep growing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, so, so I did that many times. I have pulled a million weeds, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you had to pull by the root. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's what, I think that's what we have to do in our own lives when there is something that, that your mind is continually going back to, mm -hmm. or, you're stuck in a time um, of a tragedy or an emotional or abuse or whatever you've gone through. Jesus wants to shine a light there and he wants mm -hmm. to pull that out by the root yeah. because he wants to fill every broken piece yes. in our life. I love where he says, I stand at the door and I knock, but we have to let him into those places. Yes. Yeah, We have to say, to come on sure. in, yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Inner healing is so important because, you know, we're actually tripart beings. So we are a body, uh, but we're also a soul and we have a spirit. At the intersection of our spirit and our body is our soul. And that's where our mind, our will, and our emotions lives. And I think that um, the challenge for many of us is we believe that as long as we can act like everything is okay, 
that everything is okay. But, you know, trauma in many ways is like um, fingerprints on a glass. Uh, the fingerprints will stay there until they're wiped off. So it doesn't matter if the glass sits there for five years, 10 years, 20 years, uh, the fingerprints will stay there. It's the same with trauma. I think inner healing is so important because inner healing is what wipes away those smudges from the glass. It gives us an opportunity uh, to start afresh uh, with a new understanding of who we are. So I have this one moment um, that literally was like a turning point for me, but I didn't see it as that. I mm. saw it as one of the worst things that could happen. Mm. I had been admitted to a psychiatric hospital because I kind of fell apart. I mean, I just had a breakdown where I couldn't, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't walk, I couldn't survive. So I end up in this hospital and the first morning I meet with uh, my therapist and he holds up this chart and it had all these words on it, sad, angry, afraid, ashamed. I mean, 20 words. And he said to me, hey, Sheila, I want you to come over and, and point to the words that you identify with. And I looked at the chart Mm. And I looked at him and I said, I don't identify with any of them. I don't, I'm not angry. I'm not sad. I'm not, I'm, I was just so shut down wow. inside that yeah. one of the things that when you suppress, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, my, the trauma in my childhood, when you suppress mm. fear, when you push shame into mm. the basement of your soul, which, you know, says, if guilt tells me I've done something wrong, shame tells me I am something yep. wrong. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can't just yep. suppress the bad stuff. Right. You suppress the good stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. And as I looked at that chart and I thought, people feel all this stuff. And it was, it was the beginning of this journey oh. to try and understand why yeah. I hated myself so much. Mm. I mean, I'd been a contemporary Christian artist yeah. for years. I sang at Billy Graham's Crusades. Mm. I had been a co-host of the 700 Club for five years. Mm. But still, when I looked in the mirror, I still saw the little girl whose dad appeared to hate her in the end. Wow. And that's all I saw. And so that was the beginning. See, that's why I think about the mercy of God. Yeah. Yeah. Mercy is such a little word, but it weighs so much. Yeah. Yeah. I would have just gone on like that for the rest of my life, but God said, no. Christ said, I've come to give you yes. life, yes. not survival, no. right. not just getting through one right. more day, yes. but life. That's so good. And, wow. and I'll never forget, I was there for a month. I mean, it was one of the most radical months of my life. And there was a small group of us, maybe like 10 of us that were in at the same time. And at the end, um, the day I was due to leave, a therapist said, okay, guys, I want you all to go around the room and tell Sheila what you like about her. And I couldn't stand it. And mm. he said, he got my body language. And he said, okay, what is wrong with you? I was comfortable mm. facing all that was bad with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, what I, did, mm. what I didn't want to deal with. But suddenly to get these positive affirmations yeah. for people I was on this journey with was really hard. And he said, okay, you sit there and you open your hands and you open your heart mm. and you listen. Mm -hmm. And it was just this beautiful way of God saying, Believe it or not, I was there in those worst days. Yeah. yeah. And you've never lived an unloved moment in your life. Yeah. And I'm here now, and I'm going to walk you through this process. Honestly, I would go through all of that again mm. for the yes. way that I've seen Christ redeem it. Mm. Yes. Because there's a difference between wounds and scars. Yeah. yeah. Wounds are raw, yeah. and yes. you need time to heal. Yeah. yeah. But when there's scars, Mm -hmm. then you're able to reach out to other people yes. and right. comfort yes. them with the same comfort right. with which wow. you have been comforted. Right. Yes. But I, just, I just see the way that God is a redeemer, yes, even in the, yes, with the worst is. of childhood trauma. Right. Yes, he is. It's interesting to me how your past can shape the way that you kind of look at life and experience life and the present moment. Things that were poor choices, things that you're like, totally ashamed of, totally embarrassed of, that you just beat yourself up over. Those can shape the way that you're able to see life now and today and experience. For me, the fact, you know, a failed marriage, um, the whole thing, it has given me this like ability to, um, to walk out life with my husband and my kids with this attitude of just gratitude. I am so grateful that even through all my junk, God saw fit to bless me with an amazing husband 
who is faithful, who um, is a great daddy, who loves God far more than he could ever love me. And it's so powerful when we think of wounds and scars. It's like wounds, you become the one needing the healing. The focus is on you. Right. But when it's scars, it's like now you can reflect back. Like the scripture says, it's the old landmark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a landmark of a previous pain, right. a previous pain that was so um, fragile, vulnerable. And, but now you could speak from that place mm -hmm. and say, I want, I want to talk to you about yeah. the wound that you're walking through, this is the scar that shows proof yeah. of God's healing in mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell yeah, it's the proof in the pudding. I, yeah. I finished yeah. speaking at a women's event last year, and I noticed there was one gentleman in the audience, and I thought maybe he was the pastor just, you know, kind of listening and <laughs> make sure I wasn't going to go wacky on the field. So funny. <laughs> the but at the end, he had stayed over and in one area, and when almost everyone else had gone, he came over and he turned his face toward me for the first time, and I saw that half of his face was gone. Oh. And, and I asked him what his story was, and he said when he was 15 years old, he put a gun underneath mm. his, and in that millisecond between when the bullet left the chamber and entered his skull, he heard Jesus say, do you want to live? Mm. And he said, yes. And he's now married with three beautiful daughters. And I said to him, when you see your reflection in the mirror, is it a reminder of that devastating day? Mm -hmm. And he said, no, it's a daily reminder wow. of the grace of God. <laughs> yes. And that's why I think we tell each other our stories. Yeah. yeah. Because so many women think I'm the only one. And that's when the healing can begin is when we acknowledge it and share it. Because yes. you never know what you're walking through. Yeah. I don't know what you're going through. You don't know what I'm going through. We have to share yeah. and bear each other's burdens and walk together. You know, it's where it says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two verses further on, it said, each man must carry his yes. own load. Yeah. And I thought, yes. explain that to me, Lord. Burdens. I was just reading that. Yeah. It's the word used in Greek for a ship's yeah. load. Uh -huh. So it means there's some things that you walk through that are too much to carry by yeah. yourself. That's yeah. good. And then the word that's used for carry your own load is what Christ has designed us all mm -hmm. to carry. Yeah. But there's situations in life where you're like, I can't carry this by yeah. myself. Yeah. yeah. And that's when we move in yeah. to one another's lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I often ask women in conference, okay, I want you to imagine this. When you walk through these doors, suddenly all your baggage became visible. Mm -hmm. And you have to drag it to your <laughs> seat. <Run. Yeah. laughs> You said run. <laughs> and I say, I'm not talking about your pillow and your snacks. Right. I'm talking about the stuff you've buried yeah. from yeah. childhood. Yeah. But true. then I say, if you saw it, would you want to take it home? Or would you want to take Christ up on that glorious offer mm. at the end of Matthew 11, the last two verses? Mm. Come unto me, yes. all who are weary and heavy laden, yes. and I will give you rest. You know, going back to this idea of people not knowing what you're carrying, um, you know, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Like, I didn't hear Jesus, God, Bible, church, any of that until I was invited to church when I was 11 by my wow. classmate in the sixth grade. Um, and I, I'll never forget, you know, when I walked into the church that day, those people were so loving and they were so kind, but they didn't know that I had survived two suicide attempts. Like they didn't know that at nine years old, I tried to take my life. And at 11, I tried to take my life again because of just all the dysfunction and the trauma and yeah. feeling like I didn't matter. And um, dysfunction was abuse. your news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, that's why we have to be so careful yeah. to not hurt people. Yes. Right? Because you just don't know. You don't, you don't know. know. It's like, you know, we get into situations with somebody who's rude to us, right? Yes. And, and, you know, our first instinct is to be like, wait a minute, let yeah. me tell you <laughs> yeah. who I am. Yeah. But then we have to take a step back and be like, yeah. you know what? That person is obviously yeah. angry because there's something going yes. on in their life. Yeah. And it's like, how can I be a blessing to them? And I've always compared those, they're like deep contrast. It's like, they have everything, but they're bitter. And this person has nothing, but they're so much better. And I've often seen the case of that in life when we are working through healing. We've seen people walk through divorce. We've seen, you know, even in my own life, people walk through some serious scenarios and yet they have overcome and they have a great way at looking at life. My encouragement for all of you is like, when we're, when we're walking through life, it's to just focus on being better. Focus on walking away with something that is, that's worth more than becoming the person that you despise the most. Like we all, we've met them, we've heard their conversations. It's like, you wanna go and take a shower because they're so negative, you know? It's like, do I wanna be that? 
And I think for me, if I can be quite honest, there was a point in my life that I was so negative. I was hard. I was hard on myself. My kids were small. Um, you know, my relationship with my husband, it was, it was getting tense as the years went on because stuff that I did not resolve. And I kept blaming other people instead of looking at me instead of looking at the person in the mirror and actually noticing, you know what, you're the common denominator in this whole scenario and you are your own worst enemy. So my encouragement to you is just get better, get healing, you know, fight for it. You know, you don't have a, a right to, to be negative and unforgiving, but you do have a right to healing. And so that's, that's what I aim for. Now I've, I feel better, I look better, I, you know, like, I have less wrinkles, thank you Jesus, you know, and I don't need Botox, hallelujah, all right? But but it's the attitude of looking at life with, with the glass, you know, full instead of the glass empty. It's having a better attitude and working through tense situations and walking away with a, with a better outcome. It's hard because, you know, when we're nursing our own trauma, the first thing we want to do is lash out. Yeah. And we don't have tolerance, and we don't have patience, but that's what the love of God is. And I mean, I think about when Jesus hung on that cross, think about this, in all of his pain, in all of his, his trauma, before he died, he forgave two people who were hanging next to him. Mm, I know. I mean, imagine that. Yeah. Like, you, you have enough love. To walk in that kind of forgiveness. Yeah. It's incredible to I mean, we me. get ticked off at the person who ran the red light. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Seriously. And it shuts us off. What are you doing? It's like, what? I mean, well, what I mean, manner of love yeah. is that? And so to me, that's the power of redemption. It's like, you yeah. don't know what somebody is carrying, yeah. Yeah. but you love them anyway. The truth about pain is that, you know, it, it especially when it causes bitterness, um, it begins to seep into every area of our life. Um, I've experienced situations where bitterness uh, created a lack of joy in my life. And as a result, good things would happen, but I couldn't enjoy them. Um, I couldn't actually experience them because the bitterness had seeped into every area of my life. Um, it doesn't stay localized. Resentment does not stay localized. This is why we have to let it go. This is why we have to forgive. Um, I often think of bitterness as drinking poison and expecting it to kill the other person. It ends up hurting you. And so you really do have to let it go or else the beauty that God puts right in front of your eyes will be missed because the lens that you're filtering it through is the pain of your past. God always gives us that chance, yeah. that moment, that blink, yes, <laughs> that thought, yeah. and it gives us a choice. Yeah, He does. Of how to respond or how to react, yeah. mm -hmm. um, you know, to everything we go through. But I love how you framed that. It's, we're so quick to ask somebody, what's wrong with you? Like, yeah. what, what's wrong with you? It's not what's wrong with you. It's what happened to you. Yeah. Oh, that what is What happened to yeah. you what to happened? make you act hurt that you. way? Who yeah. hurt you? And I think we're so quick to be like, oh, just cutting people off yeah. and yeah. blocking people and don't call me anymore. <laughs> Yeah, like so something true. Unfollow. Yeah. yeah, unfollow. But it's like, man, something happened. I love the idea of being a conduit of grace because we are truly the incarnation of God's grace on this earth. Yeah. yeah. So how can we extend that to people that hurt us? Yeah. So I don't know what it is you need today. I think a lot of us need to be healed in the innermost parts of our heart. If you need someone to agree with you, I'm here to do that with you today. And we're going to ask God God Himself to walk with us right into those deep, dark, traumatizing, most horrible places, those places that you've never let anybody else um, allowed in or, or to shine a light on. We're going to ask Jesus to come into those places and to shed His light and to bring His grace and to receive His redemption and His salvation to those parts. God, we give over to You everything in our spirits, everything in our souls, everything in our mind, God, that You consume our lives with Your presence. God, consume our lives with Your life and Your light and Your Holy Spirit. Come, dwell in those places. God, perform a miracle inside of our hearts. God, let us feel your peace. Let us feel your joy. 
Let us realize that everything that we need, God, we find in you and you alone. God, and I pray that everybody feels your embrace today. God, in the miracle of salvation, the miracle of healing, the miracle of peace that passes all understanding, God, I pray that it's ours today and that we receive you into every area of our life, every area of our heart, God. Let us receive you, everything that you have for us today, in Jesus' name. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.